Those are five reasons you may actually master language patterns, no matter in which situations you want to use them into, faster than you think. The first one is really what we see about any kind of skill is to think that you, you are either born with something or you're not. You're either born good or you're not. Actually, what I heard recently that was really interesting is that discipline outperforms talent and passion outperforms uh, discipline. So even if somebody is born more talented than you, had a better um, education or whatever than you did, with discipline alone over time, you can outperform and outgrow how far they can go. With the language patterns, if you practice your skills for long enough, you will just become better than eventually even Ericsson himself which may take like 20 or 30 years, but at some point you will get there anyway. And then the factor of passion can even outperform that. So if you are passionate about something, in many cases, you will find both the motivation and uh, enough stimulation in your brain to accelerate the learning. So it is not really about forcing yourself to study something, it is about how can I make this more enjoyable? If you want to develop your skills with speaking hypnotically, which kind of topic could you use that into that would be much more fulfilling for you and much more interesting for you. The second kind of secret is something I used to joke about with some, with some friend. It is that if you have trouble figuring out, finding examples and models for mastering a sleight of mouth or a, a linguistic reframing or how to be more influential, if you say, oh, I don't have anything, anybody around me, I can ask for advice. Actually, you have one person that you may not think about. If you just notice in your direct environment right now, in your direct entourage, who is the most pessimistic, negative person you can ever, you could find that is around you. The kind of person no one wants to be around because that person is always criticizing everything or just being uh, very negative, whatever what the topic is about. If you study and listen to what this person says, that will be the best reservoir of examples ever for how to use language patterns, for how to be more persuasive, because those pair of people are they usually come from a really sad background, they are really sad inside or really angry inside, which is why they are like this. Um, on a side note, if they don't ask you, yourself for therapy or coaching, just don't go there. Those people are just staying in their own bag of shit for their whole life until eventually they ask for help, in which case you can help them. But if they are just complaining all the time, leave them alone, go away, you have more important things to do with your life. That being said, if you just study and listen to those people for a while, you can notice their uh, ways of reframing any concept or idea is just magical. Because whatever you say, whatever is happening in the world, they will find a way to turn it into complete shit. They will find a way to make it sound negative, whatever, uh, even the most positive thing ever, they will find a way to point the attention to a detail in that uh, thing you were talking about that is really negative. Or to rephrase something, which is just called redefine uh, in the slide of mouth model, they will rephrase anything, something you have said so that your emotions may be triggered or maybe like, oh yeah, actually yes. So those people are the greatest examples ever and once you see it as a laboratory, uh, laboratory of study, you also may feel less negative about, oh I have to endure that person again at work, just notice what you can learn from them. They are masters at reframing. The third secret is to only use what makes sense to you. I know between the Milton model, the, uh, the meta model, uh, submodalities, the uh, sensory language, slide of mouth, everything, many beginners into NLP or hypnotherapy feel completely lost and think they have to master everything to understand everything before they can become persuasive, before they can book a client for real for coaching. Actually, the way I learned personally was by focusing much more on what made sense to me and kind of dismissing the rest, uh, not completely forgetting about it, but 
putting it aside for a while. Aside until I feel compelled about studying that again. In the beginning, just notice what really makes sense. You can only understand embedded commands, great. Start there and the rest, all the, the linguistic advanced presuppositions, later, okay? Later, you will see that later. In the beginning, practice with what you already understand and what already makes sense to you. Number four is that even if people think it is all about they don't know enough, I don't know enough about a slide of mouth, I don't understand how to formulate a hypnotic suggestion, your lack of conscious understanding is the least problem ever. The biggest problem is much more the pressure to deliver a result. Whether it is in a coaching session where you have a client and you have to provide a positive change, or in a sales situation where there is money on the line, or a dating context where you want to get something out of the person you are interacting with, in each of those scenarios, there is a pressure to deliver and to get to a result. That pressure you put on yourself for getting that result is causing most of the paralysis, of the lack of understanding, of the lack of uh, improvisation, of fluidity, much more than your lack of, uh, much more than the, the techniques you don't know of, that you don't know about. The techniques will come to you intuitively if you have been listening to me or Bandler or anybody. The techniques will come to your mind intuitively when you are in a situation where you need to use those patterns and you have a free calm headspace. And there, all of those things you have been swallowing unconsciously will come out. Not everything, but a few things. And down the road, you build up your skill set. There was a great explanation from the book by George Leonard called Mastery, where he was teaching Aikido, I think, for like many years. And he said whenever his students uh, were just practicing for the sake of it, they were making rapid progress and uh, much bigger progress. Whenever there was a competition on the line, they had to compete or they had to prepare for a competition about uh, this prize, to win this medal, to win this uh, status, whatever. Injuries in the classroom, in the dojo, were firing off exploding. Because whenever there is too much of a pressure on the external reward, the external goal, then all the capacity of the brain to improvise and figure out uh, the right things to do, the right things to say, will just kind of get restricted and tense. Whereas when you don't attach to the outcome, you don't care about the outcome, this is where your skill set drastically improves and even way faster than you may have expected. And the last one, number five, is that persuasion is actually education. Or should I say, if you start seeing persuasion or hypnosis or uh, sleight of mouth as nothing more than educating people on something interesting, at least something you find interesting at the very least, that will remove a lot of the pressure again because, first of all, if you stop seeing it as a battle to win over, then there is no resistance anymore, there are no objections anymore, and you are simply answering questions being asked by some immature person who doesn't know as much as you do. When you start seeing all your language, all your persuasive tactics as just educating people about something interesting, and if they don't want to take it, their loss, not yours, then there is not many, not really any more frustration about, oh, I should have said this, oh, they, uh, they should have been listening to me better. If you stop seeing that as a battle where you have to be in confrontation with somebody for their attention, a confrontation is always implying a winner and a loser. Why would you ever presuppose a meta frame into which you might be the loser? Whenever I communicate with people, I never presuppose that there might be a loser, because if there might be a loser, it might be me. But if I presuppose it is just a mutual agreement to share with each other and learn from each other, then how could I have pressure about, oh, I should say this, uh, you should get this, what if you just listen to me and get whatever you can learn from that? And I enjoy doing this because I know I share valuable tips to at least a few people who will do something with it, from all the ones who will listen to this. Then there is not really any more resistance I have to crush battle with. There is not really any more limiting beliefs because there is no battle to win over. It is simply an exchange. 
And if you want to develop your skills faster with language patterns, with a simple automated system that you can just practice with for two, three minutes per day and get to a really good level of skills, you can check the method down below called the Unlimited Language Patterns System that you can learn from and you will have a complete framework with detailed examples for how can you say whatever you want to say in a more persuasive way using only the language patterns you need, only the, the chunks you need in one big phrase where you ask a rhetorical question or anything, how can you dissect that into smaller chunks, study them one by one and notice how they could apply to any real problem you want to work with, uh, with your clients, with the people you want to persuade, how could you lead their mind, mind in a new direction without them arguing with you? Again, there is a tweak uh, in your psychology about how to not see that as argumenting, as a confrontation, but just as a normal exchange. You will figure all, the, all of that out down below in this method uh, on the first link, and I wish you good luck and see you pretty soon in the next video.